Welcome to our highlight show, which features the national men and women's teams here in action at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Center on the east side of Johannesburg. The Super Sport Wheelchair Basketball Series has come to the end of round one and is in recess for this particular outing. At the end of the first round, the Wolverines are certainly taking a pounding, losing out to the Sun 66-41 and then again to the Spears 53-38. A reminder then of the log standings at the end of the first round. It's the Lions in the lead on 13 points. Eagles in second place on 10. And the Wolverines and the Spears bringing up the uh, bottom of the log, seven points apiece. Our first feature match will feature the Amawila Girls Gold up against the Amawila Girls Green. And uh, no doubt this is going to be a very interesting and exciting encounter. A very strong lineup from the Amawili Girls Gold, and they'll be spearheaded by Dudazile Guaza playing at number 14. She'll be looking for support from the likes of Moeng and Hagu. The coach is Rolf Reynolds. Opposition for the day look no further than number 14, Linda Boselli, and she will be the uh, chief destroyer in charge, no doubt. Match officials for this encounter, courtesy of the Cecil Technical Excellence Program, is Charles Minetti and Adam Maroki. An attempt going up. Good rebound taken, and very unfortunately, though, that uh, layup should have been at this level, one would have hoped. Another opportunity, though, and finally, basket does drop. Well, Linda Boselli uh, is really a key, key player on the green side. It's just so feeding it, yeah, feeding it through though. And a very unselfish player is Boselli, just trying to distribute the ball and make sure that the right player in the right uh, position, best set for the shot, gets the ball. I just had an issue with the uh, chairs and a player just about falling out, so they stopped the game. And we get going again. So Gold just able to keep the ball in play. Moeng just pushing it across and another long shot. What a great basket. Fantastic shot from Tutuzeli Guaza. Coach Reynolds uh, for the goal side using his substitutes well. Ilavogili Moeng bringing it over the line. But the green defence has just clicked in. And what a fabulous pass through. Yeah, just unable to convert though. Yeah, Doneo Masima missing by us and something that should have been quite easy. again that combination really working well well finished off basket by Kelebakhile Moeng Moeng with the shot attempt actually turned out to be a long pass attempt that basket surely will count To the Zile. Quasa making hay while the sun shines, and certainly Team Gold coming into their own. A little nudge to give the taller player the opportunity on the right hand side. Free shot to come. Let's go with plenty of air. And got fouled again, looks like, in the process of putting that basket up. Kielabokhile Moeng to take yet another free shot attempt for the ladies in goal. That lead has been extended by eight points. It's the widest gap we've had in the game thus far. Well, take no own rebound. The one who committed the foul. Well, that's how you capitalize.
What great interception, uh, uh, interplay, I beg your pardon, by the ladies in green. They somehow have managed to come straight through the key. And that was such a well-deserved basket. Probably the basket of the game thus far, Kevin. Yeah, very, a very well-worked uh, basket. Uh, everybody having a touch of the ball. For a second or two, it looked like they'd lost possession, but they managed to regain it. And as you quite rightly said, everybody touching the ball, and often that's a good sign. And uh, immediate response, though, coming in from Asive Gilafile. The half time, uh, the goal over the green 22 12. The two pointers, 28% uh, uh, for the gold and 27% for the green. Shows a big problem there. Turnovers are even, but the steals on the gold side, 12, that's hurting the green side a lot. It's a 10 point lead in favor of the Amawila girls in gold over their green counterparts as we go into the second half and an immediate basket from the ladies in gold and it's that uh, powerhouse again Linda Bosele Linda Bosele is having an outstanding performance playing for the ladies in gold and she is the tall number 14 very good under the basket and here's the opposing number 14 trying to push the ball through into the key It's him back on attack. And, uh, this is Guaza feeding it off. The ball was presented for the shot and then change of mind. And there is the reason. And that was a great recovery. And that was Hagu. And there's well, Hagu just taking a great shot. pushing Team Gold yet further ahead. Certainly, given Team Green have had their moments, particularly in the defense, but they're losing too many loose balls and giving too many shooting opportunities to Team Gold. Yeah, they're certainly uh, losing the ball a lot, as we just saw happen uh, there, which is probably going to end up in a basket, which it does. And that was Kibido. So the tall players now are linking up well for Team Green and uh, creating a wonderful shooting opportunity. And here is an excellent opportunity for two points. And that really should have been taken. Papiwe Bedini missing out the opportunity. Long shot. And again, exactly that same problem. That shot might just count. What? Correction, I see the scoreboard has just been uh, altered. She's on four fouls. She's still going to have to watch herself because there's uh, five minutes left in the third and then still a full quarter to go. So, is uh, definitely going to have to behave herself. What a basket. Asive Gilefile. Fantastic clean shot. And that should be a wonderful confidence booster. Two from five. Team Gold over the line, looking for a quick response. And there it is. Dudazeli Guaza. It's a simple solution. They've got to start sinking some of the baskets. The attempts are probably as many and possibly even more than Team Gold, but they're just not able to sink the baskets. And of course, that is the key part of any form of basketball. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the a good basket there, uh, scored by Wang for the gold side. And uh, that was a very, very good pass into the key. But yet again, shot missed. And Team Gold capitalizing immediately. Uh, that's what uh, Team Gold are in a pattern of play now. Moeng will come back and hurt you every time. Well, yeah, it was another mistake. Loose ball to be picked up. 
And the percentage player goes for the layup shot. That was never going to be missed. Dudazeli Guaza. A little nod of approval. Team Green just guilty, shooting a little too soon. There was lots of time. Should have tucked herself right onto the side of the basket and taken it off the glass, but opted to let the shot go. And possession straight to the opposition. Great play. And well finished off basket. Probably one of the baskets of the game thus far. And the Team Gold well in the ascendancy now. Probably safe to say that they've got this game in the bag. The second quarter hadn't been that impressive, but certainly a great third quarter. And there is that confirmation of score. 40 points to 14 in favour of Amawile Gold. Lots of time to take uh, on that shot, but Boselli not able to convert it. No more damage done by Team Gold on that attempt. So the actually pace of the game has picked up somewhat. And a great pickup on a loose ball by Team Green going for the shot. And this, surely, those two points. And finally, something good happens for Linda Bosele. Just having a look at the uh, quarter scores, Andy. 10-8 uh, to the gold in the first quarter. 22-12 to gold in the... Or rather, 12-4 to the gold in the uh, second quarter. And 18-2 to the gold in the third quarter. It was the third quarter that certainly did the damage. And uh, Team Gold looking to continue on their merry way. But uh, two attempts, the second one right under the basket, that was never going to go anywhere. Team Gold now, having picked up the pace in this game. And Kevin, there we see it again, the, the uh, amount of attempts from the ladies in green. Well, finally one does drop. And uh, that was Shongwane who uh, was able to put that down. Kwanda Shongwane. So Team Green with an opportunity here, and this should be two points. Commentators curse, but uh, certainly the ladies in green, Linda Bosele guilty there. She had all the time in the world. She's got the height. She's a very good player. And uh, it takes the tiny in stature in Gorni to make sure of that basket. Good rebound taken using her height well. Linda Bosselli and putting Green on the attack. And that was very good defense from Team Gold just shepherding the ladies in Green out. But finally, something does come good for Linda Bosselli. Takes the two, and that's uh, 12 points in the game for her so far. Opposite number now, Guaza. Feeding it through and a very good response straight away from Moeng. Kilabokile Moeng has partnered very well with Dudazeli Guaza in this outing. Put together a very, very solid combination. Well, something does drop, and that uh, came courtesy of Yonke for. Team Green. Well, if we reflect on this game, the first quarter, Team Green really held their own. It was the second quarter that uh, was almost even Stevens as well, but the third quarter is where the damage was done in this game. And Team Gold really capitalized. And they've just kept it going, and they've got a very healthy lead now. It was 20. It's only 18 points, the difference. But they'll be comfortable because Team Green at the stage, whilst they've got a lot of possession, and uh, as I say that, 
we probably see a fantastic shot from the top of the key pulling them back yet another two points team green two minutes and counting yeah, team green on the other hand they've hit uh, 13 of the two pointers out of uh, 49 attempts so far well team green doing very well on this particular maneuver and it would be fabulous if they could end it with that basket and they've done exactly that hard work but it was a fine team effort Porcelli just finishing off a move and she's going to go to the line for a free for the uh, free shot created by the foul and Colise Colisilia rather is uh, the guilty party with the with the foul I don't know why everybody was just sitting watching because he only had one shot. Well. But she made the best of it. Well. What an opportunity and opportunity taken by Linda Bosselli. Everybody just went to sleep, took her own rebound, and uh, capitalized. And suddenly there is quite a comeback by Team Green. A lot more respectability brought to the score sheet. There was a 20-point deficit, and that's been whittled down to 12. Gilly coming that foul gives the uh, green put in from the baseline. And again, some great play from Team Green. We see them finally moving the ball around. They're not so static. And take that, sports lovers. Indlela. That was young Lungile Indlela. Finally gets her name on the score sheet. Long shot is going up change of mind and that was the right choice because another basket has just dropped yeah team green is suddenly using all the court and this is what's making all the difference for them yeah that was Sean Grani again had a very very good game into the last half minute so too little too late but had this game gone perhaps a little longer we could have seen tighter things as we do see a very good shot drop though for team gold and that was on the move and that was Dutazeli Guaza. What a game Guaza has had. And it's uh, Kevin Guaza has been sitting on four fouls for the whole of this quarter. So hats off. She's backed away from the physicality, not allowed herself to get into a situation, realizing that she is the go to player and would have gone off had she got five. That's so exact, good play. Exactly right. Well, this time, Wang puts the basket down. Uh, the full-time stats uh, saw the uh, Amagui girls green outscore the gold by 20 points to six in the last uh, quarter, but 32% uh, uh, shooting average on the two pointers for gold and 32% as well for the green. But uh, turnovers, 15 and 13, quite even there, but a lot of steals there going the gold's way, causing a pain for the green side. And the point analysis, uh, all the points coming from there, two pointers, no three pointers uh, attempted and all the one-pointers uh, missed. And the game leaders, Guaza, of course, scoring all the points, and uh, Wang and Mosimo are doing all the work on the court for the gold team. And uh, on the green side, Bosella seems to be the Bosella show from their point of view. Wonderful to see then that the ladies game is in good shape and certainly improving as time goes by. Before we get into the main action of the day, I caught up with Craig Morgas, he's the president of Wheelchair Basketball South Africa. This is from the age of 14, I turned 52 this year so it's almost 40 odd years. Um, it was part of my rehabilitation and I never looked back after then, you know, got into sport six months later I was in the provincial team uh, back in Cape Town, uh, then played for the local clubs and things like that. 
and then progressively worked into the national team and that. But I mean, it's been my this has been my life. I mean, I, you know, I've worked I've worked for the game. I've worked after I retired. I kept on working for the game itself, and then still working for the game. You know, sitting as president now, sitting on the IWF, which is an all-time great achievement of mine to be able to get to that environment. But it's been this has been my sport. You know, I've tried every single sport after being disabled, um, and this is where it's stuck. You know, and I think. This is what's going to take me to my grave is the sport. So, you know, it's, it, it's the passion of mine. You know, even though I'm not playing, the body gave up on me. You know, the shoulder fell. I don't have to tell you. My shoulder's, you know, given up on me and that's not able to play. But I'd love to play. I mean, I'm trying to get a veterans thing game, but we probably need electric chairs to be able to do that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anything, anything that is involved in the sport, that's what I want to be doing. And it's based on, you know, it's given me, it's made me who I am and it's given me, you know, the strength to grow and grow as I've grown over the years with the sport. If it wasn't for the sport, I'd probably end up on the street and probably wouldn't be here, you know, and it, it took me away from that and it gave me a life that, you know, is exactly what I needed. Over the years, it's been a struggle for us to be able to get, you know, the women together just to get them to play. And, you know, we've had spits and starts in terms of programs and things like that. And we took a conscious decision at the beginning of this year to kind of look at it from a club perspective but to get the kids involved, you know, we, we've been threatening to do this over the years. We've gone back to the old stalwarts that have been playing. That really hasn't worked out for us. And this year, conscious decision, focus on the youth, get the youth through the program, get them into their own league. So we've got a women's league that we started this year. We then had an opportunity to take an under 23 team to, um, to Thailand which was the first women's under 23 held by the IWBF. And it was an opportunity none of you know, the women teams in the past have had. And it's part of that program. You know, Britain did it a couple of years ago. They're about in year four of their program when they totally started from scratch, using the youth, both in the men and the women, but specifically for the women. And today they're world champions, you know, and that's four years down the track in a similar program pushing the, the ladies into international tournaments, getting them game time, which we weren't able to do in the past, you know, and we've managed to get this team, although, you know, the scores and how they got beaten wasn't really it. I mean, the feedback from the tournament, and you see it here today, is that the skills are there, you know, it's coming through, they're showing they're able to score, you know, it's not a 5-0 win or something like that, they're 40 points. Some of our men's teams aren't able to do that. You know, we've also included them into the Super Series like we've tried before. Nine out of the ladies that are going to be a part of the selection for the, the qualifiers in Morocco next year play for Super Sport teams. You know, play in the Super Sport teams as first team players. So, you know, it's, it's, it's come on in, in, in really fast very quickly because of the nature of getting them international competition um, and getting into you know getting them out there to play which we haven't been able to do before certainly a very competent and inspiring servant of wheelchair basketball and long may he be in the hot seat now it's time for that main action and as promised we're going to give you a very very mouth-watering clash and that features the Amawili boys, the team sponsored by Sassel, the national side in its essence and they'll be up against the Supersport All-Stars. Kevin Smith has the team sheets. The Supersport All-Stars all personnel for today, they're sporting two uh, Zimbabwe players, Daniel Nyoki and uh, Frederick Ganyapu, both playing a good uh, basketball at the moment. Uh, also ably assisted by Sepaman Gumbi. He's the uh, captain of the side today and a very solid player. And the Amawila boys, a uh, late addition is uh, Jack Mokhotsi at number six, but uh, Rakatang Moletti, the uh, speedster, and Tandili Zonke, also a very uh, quick uh, man on the basketball court and uh, captain today by Cecil Dumond. Uh, these are the people in charge, the match officials for today. In the middle, Natasha Anono. On the left of screen, it's Charles Foster and Waylo Fakadu on the right, and Kevin Smith joining me in commentary. Tip off time here at the Vodacom and of Lindor Center, and we should be in for a very entertaining match. The uh, team in blue in possession right now are the Super Sport All Stars, and they've already taken the lead with a fantastic opening. And they're up against the Amawili boys, the Sassel Amawili boys. They are they in the green, playing from right to left on your screen. So the All-Stars with a very, very quick basket. And uh, Kevin, 
on paper, it doesn't matter if you're an all-star or you're an Amawili boy. This should be a very, very exciting game. Tandili Zonke, one for the crowd, just to open the uh, response. Yeah, it should be a real humdinger, and uh, hopefully it'll turn out to be this expect the spectacle that we expect it to be. So most players in Greenwood think that they've secured their place in the national side, and the emphasis there is on think, because there's still an opportunity for some of they in the blue to force their way into the side that will be announced in a couple of days' time. Tandili Zonke controlling from the top, looking, thinking about the shot and then just pushing it to the side. And how about that for saying great decision. Fabulous basket from Rakot Singh Moletti. So Moletti slides it in. Tandili Zonke there for the pickup. And Zonke looks like he's come to play. Yeah, Cecil Dumont there setting up the screen, but uh, decided to move it around. Shane More. Williams to Tandili Zonke. How about that? This is basketball at its best. Three shots taken, three shots scored. Shane Williams. Back to the top of the key, Moletti. Wow. Yeah, what a Alexi shooting and, display. Uh, Zonke seem to have the iron. Kanyapfu doing very well. The Zimbabwean number 14 having a very good outing in the Super Series. And that is Kanyapfu. Yeah, he's been practicing his shooting uh, a lot by the looks of things because he is doing very, very well. Gombe. Getting his pass off Gumbi, but uh, falling out the chair. And uh, Ganyapu putting the basket down. The likes of Retief and Zipa Mandla Gumbi, but they've come out to play. They've come out to prove a point. And of course, they'll be ably assisted by a couple of Zimbabweans on the court. Ganyapu, Nyuke. Yeah, certainly, Andy. And uh, you know, this, this isn't going to be a gimme for the uh, Amawili boys by any, by any stretch of the imagination, as we see Ganyapu putting that basket down. Moletti thought about a shot. Shane Williams, left hand side of the court, decides he'll go for the two and takes the two. Easy as you like. Good to see relaxed shooting. Very impressive percentage. Coaches will be trying to give just about everybody on the bench some experience in this game. It's the kind of game that you use. Samanga Mbele is also on for the Amawili boys at number 15. Basket opportunity here. Tall man, second attempt. Does he get a third attempt? He certainly will. And that one finally drops. I'm a wheelie, boys. Yeah, Daniel, you're not able to. Danny was fouled in the process. Like what's saying, Moletti. Just holding out. Excellent basket by Mbele. Two points lead, just on two minutes left in this first quarter. And as I've alluded to, it's gone like a flash. When you've got this standard of basketball on display. And there is the leveller. Simpiwe yeah. Mtambo. Mzeleni, one of the danger men always to watch out for. Fantastic shooter, particularly from the top of the key. Dumont comes away just to be met by Daniel Nyoke. The shot goes up from Fenikirk. Shot goes down from Fenikirk. Happy coach. Mzeleni still in possession. The slight number five through to Yako Fenikirk. Fenico attempting the quick shot, but there's a very good correction, and it was taken by Samanga Mbele. High ball picked up by Mbele. Mbele very quickly out. Imzeleni. Imzeleni just scooting his way around. 
Vanikirk. Vanikirk seeing an opportunity on the right hand side of the court. Samanga Mbele off the glass. Excellent basket. Yeah, doing what he does best. Uh, Samanga Mbele gets himself into position. He's a tall man and he uses it well. Imzeleni adopting the playmaker position at the top of the key. And this is Shane Williams back to Imzeleni. Imzeleni faking the shot. And suddenly there's a very open opportunity. And this should be safe as houses is. Sipa Mandlagombi with all that experience is not going to miss out on that kind of shot. Molete. Rakut Singh Moletti to Imzeleni. Imzeleni, there is the change in the score sheet. Great setup. Coach will be very happy with that. Two from two. Imzeleni Imzeleni playing some great basketball today. So I'm a really boy is, uh put in from the side 16 seconds left in the half and they've got there's 16 seconds to try and plow at least another two points out of this very fertile ground and that's exactly what they've done so the Amawili boys are beginning to stamp their authority on the match but 43 percent shooting average at the two pointers they won't be happy with that and uh, the All-Stars definitely won't be happy with their 29% uh, uh, average. Turnovers, 12 for the All-Stars. That's uh, feeding the Amawili boys nicely. Finiko doing his very best to hold Monomezzi out. It's come to the other side of the court. Nobody wants it. Tandili Zonke realizing that he's got a little bit of space to move. And it was well picked up by Mzeleni. Gave it to Mbele. So that basket is actually going to count. Looked like a was a bit late, but uh, conference between the officials confirmed that the basket counts. One shot to come for Mbele. I saw some frantic signals from the bench, and the basket, you quite right, did count. Unfortunately, though, the follow-up free shot was missed. And there's another very good steal on the line. And this time, Tanzi Lizonki has an open shot at the basket off the side. Normally you'd put money on uh, Tandili Zonki putting that shot down. Yeah, but he was well supported there by number seven, the Burley Yako Faniko. And the ball finally does find its destination by hook or by crook. How about that for moving the ball around the key? And that was a very well worked basket. It was all started off on the left hand side, found its way to the top of the key, and then some great play by Monomezzi to finish off a slick move. So that was a suicide pass from the side from the Super Sport All-Stars. An opportunity well seen. Great play by Tandili Zonki getting that ball across to Yako Finiko, virtually forcing a foul, and that was called. Yeah, it's in Tulana. Yeah, in the party there for the All-Stars. And Tulana was probably sold down the river. He was right on Finiko at the time. That's how you take the free shots. Looking for a full house is Fanico. Shoot short. Yeah, can I have another one? Because Antolana crossed the line too soon. So corrective measures are required here from Jaco Fanico. Give it a little bit more air and he does exactly that. So in a one-point game, that would have been a criminal offence by the men in blue to cross that line. Because Fanikirk was able to take, and it'll be recorded as two from two. Superman Lagumbi is being watched very, very carefully. 
And Tsipa Mandlagumbi just reeling back the years. Tandili Zonke proving that he can do exactly what Tsipa Mandla can do. Remember, Tsipa Mandla Gumbi and Tandili Zonke, former national players together, and both just shooting brilliantly from the side. Tandili Zonke choosing to go it alone. Great chair control. Yeah, I'm sure he hasn't uh, lost a yard in speed. He certainly hasn't. Samanga Mbele. And suddenly the Sassel Amawili boys starting to put foot to the pedal. Yeah, and this game is just a real good showcase of the talent that's available. So changing the combinations, giving everybody their chance to shine. That's got to be a foul. I don't know why it wasn't called earlier, Daniel Nuke for the All-Stars. And it'll be shots. Samanga Mbele on the line. Excellent first shot. And like clockwork, just repeated exactly the same off the wrist, through the elbow, and suddenly the Amawili boys are back on song. Imzelene pivoting his way around Marcus Retief, coming through one man and just popping it over for Cecil Dumont. Dumont knows that he should have put that away. Imbele goes back to the top. Imzelene, he's going to put the long shot up, and why not? Very reliable on the day is Imzelene, and as I've said a few times, don't worry about the stature. Amawili boys, Imzelene playing at the top of the key as the playmaker, Samange Mbele, trying to force his way through, but Daniel Nyoki fouling. Here's that shot again from the top of the key. All the time in the world. Suddenly there's 20 points the difference. At the break it was 10. So the Amawili boys, the Sassel Amawili boys have really extended themselves and started to make things happen in this third quarter. Good interception from the uh, Super Sport All-Stars. Sipa Mandlagumbi seeing the top. Ganyapfu not going to make any mistakes. Four from seven. So Coach Dumont on the sidelines. Still not as happy as perhaps she could be. Really just picking up that... Uh, Offensive rebound and uh, making no mistake with the shot. So 20 points, the deficit at the moment as we find our way into the final minute of this third quarter. And here's an open opportunity, great play. Perhaps too much work being done, but it was finished off anyway by Sipaman Lagumbi. It kind of seems that the players, the strong players that haven't had too much game time, they dead certs, they're in the side. Yeah, I think so. It's, it seemed to be going that way because you would have thought that we'd seen a lot more of uh, Shane Williams, but uh, I think he's uh, pretty much cemented his side. Yeah, his, his Shane stage. Williams, Tandili Zonke, we haven't seen too much. We've seen that we would normally enter. There's Shane Williams back on the court now, so maybe we'll see an acceleration in the scoring. Sipamanda Gumbi did very well there, manages to get it off to Ganyapu, and uh, Ganyapu making sure that the ball does get across the line. Well played, Basket. Deserves to be two points. Fantastic flow. Absolutely what the doctor ordered. Daniel Nyoki. 
for me, that's the uh, basket that really proves that South African basketball is alive and well. Shane Williams missing out. Well, that is the problem with uh, these guys who sit out a long, for a long time. You know, they do uh, come on the court uh, very cold. Second attempt from Williams is good. So Ganyapu, he's been well marked though. He's got uh, Moletti on him. Ganyapu getting it to the tall man, Daniel Nyoke. Nyoke not able to convert. Yeah, it looks like he was fouled in the process. Kevin, we're seeing it again. Daniel Nyoki needs to work on his follow-through on his shots because he's pulling his wrist back and at the last second the ball is losing direction. Well, he got it right on that occasion, but uh, a tall man like that should never miss. Marcus Retief looking for options and he was very lucky that that found its destination. But uh, it's just been taken away ever so casually by Cecil Dumont. He says, I'll take a piece of that. Yeah, I think he was expecting a foul to be called because he sort of sat there and was expecting the whistle to blow and then nothing happened. And in a flash and a blur, Shane Williams takes another two points. And that all started with the most casual of steals. Easy intercept there from uh, Tandili Zonk. He's just uh, angry with himself that he couldn't control it more. So Tandili Zonk able to calm himself and he's had a, a good outing today led from the front take a look at that Ganyapu five from nine for Freddy Ganyapu and then Bele sets Mzeleni on his way and that little underhand flick shot not this time but rebound taken by Tandili Zonki and they can start that all move again Monometsi at number 11 is back on the court. That's how you take the free shot. And just a correction there, that foul was called on uh, Sifaman Lagumbi, but it was called on the wrong person. Second shot going down. Two but from foul, two. But the foul was actually on Ntambo, and the, the board has been corrected. Ball was never going to get to the basket as soon as it left his hand. You could see it was going nowhere near. Jako Fenikirk. Samange so Mbele just sailing literally into the eye of the storm and scores the basket. Well, somehow that pass found its destination and the All-Stars needed to convert that. But it looks like it's uh, going to be too little too late now. Cecil Dumont with probably his easiest attempt of the game and makes absolutely no mistakes. Wife happy, coach happy. No easy take there. It was easy as you like. And Jakob Fenico sat there a little like the Statue of Liberty just held his hand up. Nothing happened. Well taken basket for the All-Stars. And that was converted there by Sipa Mandlagumbi. Yeah, and Monometsi. He's having a good game today. He's had a very good game today. Apart from that long flat shot that went nowhere. Here's Tandi Lizonki. Back to the top of the key. Mzeleni. <laughs> Machotzi is back on the court. Yeah, clumsy foul there from Untorlana. Mangambeli. The 
fact, I alluded to Jack Machozzi being on the court. He is, in fact, still on the bench. And Samangambele continues with the free shots. What a great display. It's the Super Sport All-Stars. Will that be the final basket of this particular game? Well, we'll know the answer to that in the next 10 odd seconds. Imzeleni pushing it out. Tandile Zonki knows that the clock is ticking. That long shot goes, but it's very short. Monometsi uh, fouling him in the process. So with a couple of seconds left in the game. Both teams, both teams again on uh, collective fouls in this quarter anyway. Samange Mbele. It almost looked like a replay of the first. Consistency is what is needed on those free shots. Well, as expected, the Amawili boys prevailing over the All-Stars, but it wasn't a free ride. Look at the All-Stars uh, shooting uh, stats. Uh, 17 out of 49 on the All-Stars. And... Uh, 35% for the Amawili boys. A lot of turnovers from the All-Stars. That gave the points, more points to the Amawili boys. Any points analysis? Uh, 17 out of 49 and the two pointers for the All-Stars. Only one three-pointer attempt and uh, one out of 13 attempts of the free throws. And three uh, three-point attempts for the Amawili boys and 10 out of 22 for the one-pointers. And the All-Stars uh, game leaders, Ganyapu with the points, Daniel Nyuki, Gumbi and Jim, uh, all doing their on-court uh, on uh, antics there, giving them uh, a lot of assistance. And Samanga Mbele doing a lot of the work for the, all, uh, for the Amawili boys. Lydia, a really entertaining game there, but getting down to the, the business end of what today was all about, you had the, the Sassel Amawili boys, essentially the nucleus of the uh, national side that would probably go to Morocco in the uh, Paralympic qualifiers early in 2020. Some of the players on the uh, All-Star side, they've also knocking on the door. Tell us a little bit how that's all going to work and your thinking as we move towards those very important qualifiers. Uh, Andy, today was a good game. We won the game. I'm still not impressed by their shooting. We're putting up the shots, but it's not counting. So that's certainly a key that we have to work on now going forward. So by the end of September, I have to give a squad of 16 names that has to go to Saskok and to all the other parties involved. And then from that 16, at the end of November, we will pick the final 12 that will be going through with us to Morocco. And what preparation will come in after that final selection? I assume uh, loads of team training camps and uh, uh, obviously you've got that December break, which always is a little bit of a hiccup. Yeah, we have um, practice sessions after the Super Sport Games now every weekend. And then I think we still have three camps left and a mid-December camp as well and beginning of January. So hopefully they won't go all out over the holidays. Now, as a national coach, um, you've really come a long way in a very short time uh, where one considers the experience of previous coaches and uh, how, how are you feeling right now about that road to Morocco and the responsibility that you're going to have to carry on your shoulders? Oh, like I saw today, it's a lot of work. It's hard work. It's not easy. But I believe in my guys. I know we can do it if we work as a team. So we all just have to step up and do what's necessary. results for the day's play then the Amawili girls gold 46 over 34 from the Amawili girls green and in the men's game it was the Sassel Amawili boys 58 to 35 by the Supersport All-Stars. Despite coming from the losing side the play of the day was undoubtedly a fantastic move and that was created by the Supersport All-Stars. Take a look at this. A great move started by Freddy Ganyafu, managing to get the board well on its way to the halfway line. Daniel Nyuke picking up 
a pass, flicking it through to see Pamandla Gumbi. Gumbi seeing Nyuki back in the position, off the glass, two points. Thank you very much. Fantastic team basket. The start of the second round of the Super Sport Wheelchair Basketball Series happens on the 14th of September and we'll bring you those in a highlights package on the 27th of September. Until then, it's goodbye.